Welcome back to all you arty crafters and hello to any new viewers. So today I'm going to be taking you through how I've made this dotty mandala, this lovely rainbow one. So I started off with some guidelines there. I used these little plastic stencils that I bought from Amazon. I will put the link in the description box below. And then using a compass I drew on some circles to get some guidelines. And then this particular mandala is going to be a spiral, a rainbow spiral. So I'm doing three dots of each colour, a red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. And then I have an additional segment and I'm going to do that one silver to match the big circle in the middle. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my dotting tools and the first set I'm using are these ones with the metal ends. And they go up in varying sizes, starting from my smallest one that I've got here is 0.8. And this is the smallest one and it's the pink one that you can see on the screen. And then once I've done each of my segments here, I'm just doing the last one using the smallest dotting tool. And then I'm just quickly filling in the dots here that aren't quite as full as I would like, depending on the thickness of the paint. And then I'm taking my next tool, which one you can see, it's a yellowy orange tool. And this is a one millimeter dot tool. And I'm just going in between the last row, moving over slightly, so that you get a slight spiral effect and you'll see this building up as we put extra rings onto this stone. So this is, like I said, a one millimetre tool here. So I'm going to move that all the way around each colour and I wipe it off in between each one on a bit. You can use a bit of wet kitchen towel that I'm using here or you can have a rag next to you and you just keep wiping it as you go to clean off your tool. So just the last purple one, there we go, last violet, moving on to silver and then adding the dots on there. And then the next size that I've got is I turn it over. All of my um, dotting tools that are this style with the spiral color at the middle, all have the same dotting tool on the other end, the same size dotting tool on the other end. So they flip it over and it's a 1.5 millimeter now. So then on this one, I'm just gonna work around each of the colors uh, with my 1.5 millimeter tool. And a bit of a tip whilst you're doing your dotting art here, is you need enough paint on the tool in order to get your nice circular dot but to keep them equal you don't want to touch the tool on the stone itself where possible what you need to do is they call it kissing the stone so you get a contact between the paint that's on your tool and the stone and then you gently press and lift up obviously this video is sped up and this i take a good few seconds each of those dots to place and make sure I get the right amount of paint on each of those dots. So as you can see now I've moved up to my white dotting tool and the ball on the end of this one is now a two millimeter dot and as you can see the spiral effect is starting to show on the stone so each row that you go out on your circle you move over slightly so you fit your dot just above and in between the previous dots rows and that will create as you go each time you do a row you move over slightly and it will create that spiral effect I've now moved on to the next size dotting tool as you can see I have got the blue dotting tool here and the ball on the end of this tool is a 2.5 millimeter tool so with the effect of increasing the size on each of the row will give you a nice spiral and graduation of the colours and sizes of the dots. I just want to take this moment to thank everybody for watching and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do consider hitting the subscribe button below to be one of the first to know when I upload any new content. So now I'm moving on to the green dotting tool and the ball on the end of this particular tool is a three millimeter tool. So like I said earlier, we're going up in 0.5 millimeter steps for these particular tools. When we move on to the acrylic rods, it changes slightly with the increase of sizing changing in between each rod. So 
Like I said earlier about the stencils, the plastic stencils I used to draw the lines on the stone in the first place, I will put the link to these dotting tools or similar dotting tools because I don't think you can get these anymore, but I will find similar ones on Amazon and I will put them in the description box below for anybody who is interested. So now I finished with the metal tip tools and this next one is the first of the acrylic rods I have. Now the sizing of this rod is technically the same as the last metal ball one. So this rod is a three millimeter rod. However, I do find that they give a slightly larger um, finished dot than the metal tools. So I use it in a graduation size like this. So I always use this one as the next one after the green acrylic tool while I'm doing the sacred geometry style Mandela stones. So the next acrylic rod sizing I have is four millimeter. Previously with the metal tools, I was going up in 0.5 millimeter steps. I'm now going up in one millimeter steps. But feel free to go up in the sizing of the dotting tools you have. If yours go up in 0.5 or if they go up in two millimeter, you just use them. As long as you use them in the increasing size so they get from smaller to larger, you will get this effect. It will just be either tighter or slightly more um, spread out. I will be making my own dotting tool soon, which I will put a video for on shortly, probably in the next few weeks. I've got some wooden dowel and I've bought some drill bits and they will go up in 0.2 millimeter sizing. So I'll be able to do one of these geometry stones, but a much tighter style. So I'm actually looking forward to doing that and it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. So now moving on to the next acrylic rod. So we are now at the five millimeter size rod. And this is one of the last ones I will do because you're getting tight where you can fit your fingers around the edge. And as you move it around, I've got it on that felt cloth. Some people use um, small turntables and I've been thinking about getting one of those. But at the moment, these felt um, squares work really well. It slides well on the surface that I use. But soon I'll have to let all those dots dry so that I can be able to pick up the stone to get the dots to go down the edge. And what I'm doing here is I've got this little pointy tool. It's actually an icing um, scribe, I think they call it, but it's just a tiny little tool with to a point on the end. And I'm just using that point to make sure that all the paint um, is spread out equally throughout the dot. So now the paint on those original dots have dried, I'm able to pick up the stone and be able to start working down the edge. So I'm using a six millimeter acrylic um, rod now, and I'm using in between putting the rod dots on because this is a larger surface of dot. Um, the paint tends to pull in the middle, I find, with the make of paint that I use. Um, so I use the scribe to equal that paint out in the dot so I have a good coverage all over the dot surface. And rather than wasting any of the paint that's left on the rod, I use the scribe to take off any excess paint that hasn't gone onto the dot. And I use that paint to equal the spread of the paint within the dot itself on the stone. I would say you just need to be careful as you're holding the stone, as you work your way around the edge, that your fingers from the other side don't start rubbing the paints because these slightly larger dots will take a bit longer to dry. Those dots in the middle took, um, I don't know, an hour, maybe two hours to dry. As you get a larger dot, they will take a little bit longer. So you've just got to be careful that you don't smudge them as you go. If you do smudge them, that's okay. You can correct them. You can use either a a damp q-tip or you can use a little bit of wet um, kitchen roll to gently wipe it off because all the other dots are dry above them, above them at this time but just be extra careful and you may not have to do any remedial action So 
So now I'm still using the six millimeter rod here. When we go down the edge of the stone, I find if you use a slightly larger tool, then the spacing gets out of whack. So you just need to try it and see how it fits with the stone you're using. You'll also notice we've gained an extra row. I seem to have lost the video for that one, so I do apologize, but it was exactly the same process. You move your dot over slightly in between um, the previous rows, but keeping with three dots per color and spreading the paint out with the scribe just to make sure you get an equal surface coverage of the paint. And for these edge rows, because I'm holding the stone and I always panic that I'm going to smudge the paint, I do let each single row of the dots dry before I go ahead and add the next row. And like I said, that is just purely because I'm concerned that I'm going to smudge them with my fingers. And there's the last large dot going down. Once you have completed all your dots, you just get a bit of wet tissue paper or a baby wipe and give it a good old wipe, wipe all those chalk marks off. And then once you've done that, you can either leave your sacred geometry stone as it is with all the black space showing or whatever your base color is. Or you can go in like I am here with my smallest dotting tool. So this is my 0.8 dotting tool. As it stands at the moment, that is the smallest dotting tool I have. And I'm using silver for this to be the tiny little dots in between and I place two dots in between each of the dots on each row and you work your way all the way through to the middle. You don't have to do this, I, I like the effect this gives that's all and so I end up doing this. This takes a little while, this can take me another sort of 20 minutes, half an hour to do all these little dots and you've got to be really careful not to smudge them like the big dots. But as all the big dots are dry, if you do smudge any of the tiny little dots, you can then just wipe it off with, a, like I said, with a cotton bud, Q-tip or a bit of kitchen roll, wet kitchen roll and just let it dry. And then you can re-dot it where on the place that you've smudged it. And if you do need a break for your poor eyes while you're doing this, because your eyes can go a little bit cross-eyed because these dots are tiny in between each row, then take as much time as you need. How I manage it is I hold from the middle and the bottom doing the edge rows as I rotate the stone. And then once I've done all the edge, I place it back down onto this uh, felt square that I have. And turning that every time I need to, I just place the dots onto the stone. And for those of you who worry about shaky hands while you're doing this, you can see that I steady my hand with my other hand because I'm not the most steady of hands. I don't shake a lot by any means, but depending on what I've had or what I haven't had to eat, I guess, and what I've drunk in the day, too much caffeine, too little caffeine, and my hand can have a, just a tiny, tiny little bit of a tremor sometimes. Um, so I tend to rest it on the table, the underside with my pinky resting against the table. And then I use my index finger of my other hand just to steady my hand whilst I'm placing the dot on the stone. The gap that I'm being left with here is getting smaller and smaller. So I'm placing less pressure on the dotting tool as I go to try and get a smaller dot as possible. Now, what I was thinking while I was doing this was it's getting smaller and smaller. My dotting tool is too big really for this. The new dotting tools that I make will be ideal for this particular situation. So I'm looking forward to being able to use those. But for the moment, this is the smallest one I have that is a proper dotting tool. And so I was trying to work out how I can do the smaller dots going forward into the last two or three rows there. And I thought about using my scribe. And so you'll see shortly that I'll start using the little scribing tool that I have. And it's a little bit awkward to start with because it is a point of a tool on the end. 
it doesn't pick up much of the paint out of the little pots that I use. And so you have to build up enough paint to be able to get a dot, but not too much that it splodges. So you can see me using the scribe here. So it takes me a little while to make sure that I can get the right amount of paint on the dot, but you can see it gives a much tinier dot than the last dotting tool. And so it worked quite well. And I'm quite happy with the result. It's just I think I'll be able to get a better style of dot potentially with the new dotting tools that I make because they're going to go down to, like I said, 0.2 millimeter and going up in 0.2 millimeter sizing. So I should be able to get into these tiny, tiny spaces quite a lot easier. So here I'm barely touching the scribe on the stone to get the tiny little dots in between the um, tiny, tiny little rows at the beginning of the spiral. It was this point I was wondering whether to go into the first row or the last row as I'm doing it now, but the first row that I placed on the stone and I decided that I was going to try it. So you can see in a minute where I start putting the tiny, tiny little dots in that first row. Here we go. We're just starting to do it now and you literally barely touching the stone to try and get a dot in there. But I like the effect that it brings it all the way to that center larger silver dot and it just brings it all together that little bit more. And these are the last final dots going onto the stone. Gorgeous rainbow stone there. And to finish off I use this clear satin lacquer. Uh, this is just from Hemway which is a brand in the UK but you can use any satin lacquer finishing the edges and just hold it down to do the top. And there we have it, there's the rainbow sacred geometry spiral stone and I've added a felt bottom to the bottom so it can go onto any unit without scratching the unit or the stone. Thanks for watching.